walking up to Medigroup in Belgrade to get an exam by a doctor or a procedure, <laughs> a hernia procedure. We'll see how this goes. Got the appointment right away, called two hours ago, got the appointment, so that's a good sign. Welcome back to Find Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. What are you going to do if you need medical care while you're on the road was one of the top questions that we were asked when we became full-time travelers. And it's a legitimate question. So when Kevin needed surgery, we decided to pack our camera and bring you along every step of the process. We're in Vienna and I started having problems with my groin. I felt like there was a hernia situation here. Unfortunately, even though we were in Vienna for a month, we also had some detour trips to Amsterdam, which split it up and felt like there's no sense in trying to fix it here. We'll deal with it later. It's not really an urgent issue right now. Our next stop was in Bucharest, and this is where it really started to become more problematic. I could really feel it, especially when we're doing our tours on and off a tour bus. I felt, yeah, you know, this isn't really good but we were only going to be there for 12 days. Really wasn't going to give us enough time to do anything, especially with the tours we had planned. So we figured, well, well we're going to be in Serbia next, and that was going to be for a whole month. So we figured, well, maybe we can get this done in Belgrade and handle it there. When we were in Romania, we did discuss that we were going to have this taken care of when we got to Serbia, but you procrastinated when we got here. What was going on? Well, I actually did look up some of the procedures you could have done in Serbia. I, I did look at what they offered as far as medical services. When we got here, I felt like, you know, I, I just want to have some time here. I didn't know what the place was like. We, I wanted to have a little time to look around. And just frankly, surgery. It didn't sound like a fun thing. I wasn't <laughs> rushing to say, let me, let me just find a hospital and just be under the knife and then all the rest of the things come along with it. I mean, I've had procedures done in the U.S. that have taken days to recover. I had a nose that was shattered and had to be reconstructed. And that, that recovery process is still in my brain, wondering, you know, how long is this going to be? Is it going to affect our travel? Is it going to affect what we're doing in this country? And will it be done enough so that we can leave and travel again? Because we had some tight schedules planned. We are pretty planned out for the rest of the year. And so we knew that this was going to be the best place to be taking care of it. I had some issues about just scheduling it myself as well, just to get it done. And partly it was because when we were in Greece and I needed to coordinate uh, vaccinations, it was very difficult because of the language and just it was it was just hard. And fortunately, we've been very healthy. So I feel like dealing with uh, insurance is just an extra step and it just always feels very complicated. And, and I think it's easy to be overwhelmed when you don't know exactly how everything is going to go. And it just feels bigger than maybe it actually is. I was worried about what the cost would be because I had no idea. Our health insurance that we have is with a high deductible. And so it's more for catastrophic illnesses. So we expected that we would have to pay for this um, out of pocket. One thing I did know that we needed to do was just to get pre-approval. So I called our insurance company. They gave us some recommendations. There was like, it was very straightforward. Yeah. And so I kind of looked at ratings and then kind of slid those names to Kevin because obviously he's the one having the surgery. I wanted him to feel comfortable with the place that we were going. We had some relatives that were saying, why don't you just wait and have this done in the US when you get there? It's like, well, the U.S. is going to be this rapid fire trip, three cities, very short period of time. There'll be no place for recovery. And as Judy said, our schedule's pretty well packed up for the rest of the year. And that meant that we really didn't have room to just say, we'll spend longer in the U.S. And I honestly didn't think it was going to be any more effective or efficient in any way or cost effective as far as that goes. So after she slid the names over to me and nudged me several times, I actually did start going down the list. And the first one I looked at, I looked at their website and they had explicitly shown that there's a hernia procedure they do. And it was 1600 euros. And it seemed like, well, that's a 
pretty good deal, you know, as far as U.S. costs go. So let me call them first. And thankfully, when I called, the phone offered an English option, press that, got someone pretty quickly and said, I need to see a doctor about a hernia situation. Can I schedule an appointment? And they said, hold on for a second. They said, came back, said, can you be here at 2 p.m.? Uh, this is at 1230. I called during the on Tuesday afternoon. I said, yes, we will gladly be there. So that's as far as we knew, that was a that was a totally different situation. We didn't expect that at all. We didn't expect to be coming in that same day. We didn't realize it at the time, but it turns out that this location actually is a private hospital, which worked out fine for us. Another reason I picked this hospital, it seemed like it was close enough that it wouldn't be a huge reach to get there. In fact, if we gave ourselves enough time, we could actually walk to the place. We've been walking around the city without a problem. So we started to walk. <laughs> decided this is a bad idea it's a it's a really hot day, hot day. <laughs> and trying to get across the river was pretty tricky if it was not the river crossing we probably would have continued so we found a taxi which wasn't exactly easy and it's hard to get the right price judy had to negotiate some prices with them i will say that in serbia you do have to be careful we were warned about that and even when you're coming from the airport they require you to get a voucher so that you're not overcharged so he was going to charge 3,000 dinars and we he somebody else hopped in that cab thankfully and so the next one only charged 12 to 1500 dinars so we went with that but for the other taxes we needed we ended up having the hospital call and that was so much easier and the cost of it was only 700 dinars so it made a huge difference also we knew we were going to be going back and forth so i reached out to my airbnb originally we were going to have surgery very early in the morning so i wanted to have some reliable transportation and our airbnb recommended a great app that helped us to uh, find the bus routes unfortunately both Apple Maps and Google Maps were not giving us the bus routes. And even when we were trying to go to the Serbian bus route, the Belgrade bus route website, unhelpful. So the fact that our host gave us this link to this app made everything so much easier. We'll put a link to that below in case you're gonna be in this city. When we arrived at the hospital, we went to the info desk and they wanted Kevin's uh, passport. And really it was just for identifying information. There was no paperwork that we needed to fill out when we arrived. They surprisingly didn't ask for our medical history or next of kin or anything like that. They just said, go ahead and wait for the doctor. Um, and we waited 10 minutes. And interestingly, it was directly the surgeon. We didn't talk to any kind of just doctor before the surgeon. So it was pretty straightforward and streamlined. So we're at med group and uh, medical examination. It's not an emergency, it's just a procedure that needs to get done and luckily they took us the same day for this so right it sounds like it's going to cost seven thousand dollars which is about 68 us dollars i actually think this situation is just a little confusing simply because we made an appointment for a specific doctor but um this doesn't look like we're going into a doctor's office or anything like that this really looks like a triage for a hospital. I don't know what it is, but it will be interesting to see how it all shakes out. So I am just waiting for Kevin to come out of some tests that he's having done. I think that they're doing x-rays. Uh, so far, this has been a pretty straightforward process, which is good, reassuring. So today was an unexpected uh, rush of activity. Not necessarily because there was anything urgent for it to no. be, except the fact that, that we're only here for another 19 days. Yeah. So I wanted to get this procedure done early. There's a hernia procedure that I need to get done. So I called one of the numbers that Judy looked up from our insurance company this early this morning. Well, I called at one one o'clock around there uh they asked if i could come in by two so 12 30 one o'clock come here by two great so we got here at two by 250 we were already standing here outside 
all the prep has been done, and if there's any problems, I have to stay an extra night. It's a whole 200 euros to stay another night in the hospital. It will be an interesting thing. Spending the night in a foreign country in the hospital is not ideal, but, um, but and also just the logistics of being a full-time traveler yeah. and having a hernia repair where you hope that you don't have any problems with carrying everything. We'll yeah. sort that out. You said I'll need to rest for a couple of days and then after four weeks I can push a car up a hill, <laughs> which I can't do now. So that's pretty impressive that <laughs> you make that happen. So, good thoughts. Yes. My little home for the next couple of days. Private room, my bed, and my surgery. It's not gonna be tomorrow morning, it's going to be tonight. So I guess I get an extra few hours to recover. It's 8 p.m. and it's around 7.15. Um, Kevin met with a cardiologist and they did a uh, echocardiogram yeah. and then just kind of went through his medical history and the cardiologist signed off on everything and for whatever reason, here it is 8 o'clock, they said that they have an ability to do surgery tonight and since he didn't have, Kevin didn't have alcohol for dinner, <laughs> they said it would be perfectly fine to have the surgery tonight and yes that gives you then um, another day to recover so that's always good. I'll take it. Good news? Good hospital support. Yeah and we were expecting it to not be a private room but it is. It's very nice and it's spare it's but it's, but it's private. not having to share it is pristine. Yeah exactly. It's fabulous. All right see you on the flip side. So as we mentioned, they wouldn't allow me into the room after surgery. Tell us a little bit about what your night was like in the morning until I arrived. Well, I thought, oh God, I, I, this was a long surgery. It's gotta be pretty late. It's gotta be like midnight or 1 a.m. I didn't know. I, of course, you're knocked out, so you don't know these things. I know that I was in an, not a lot of pain, but I knew I couldn't move much because every time I tried to move, I w was in pain. and. Uh, I had uh, a nurse coming in, checking my fluids, uh, making sure I was okay, uh, just doing some vitals after the uh, surgery, and I slept as much as I could. I was I was uncomfortable because I don't usually sleep on my back, and there was no way I was rolling anywhere with all the things that I had cut up on me. How was the medical care? How how were the nurses? The, the nurse I had overnight was fantastic. I mean, she was very kind. She she understood when I was having troubles. As good a service I've ever had in a hospital. So I had no complaints about the nurse staff at all. And the doctor even came in at one point and checked on uh, things, or briefly, like a five second, <laughs> how are you feeling? How's everything going? Good, you know, and then walks out. And I will say that all of the doctors from from beginning to end, we were able to deal with people who all spoke English. Yes. So that worked out really well. There was one place at the front desk that didn't speak great English, but there was somebody else there that was able to intercede and she was perfect. Yeah, and, and pre-surgery there was uh, a nurse that was helping me and a nurse that was helping that nurse. and. She said something to the other nurse and she looked at me and she said, oh, she's jealous because I can speak English so well <laughs> and she can't. So she's, she just wants to say things, but she, she doesn't have enough English. I said, that's fine. I, I have no Serbian, so you're doing fine. I didn't understand when we're doing, uh, when we're signing the initial paperwork, doing all the stuff, they kept asking my father's name. Um, they really, I think that they just meant your last name. No, is that right? No, they meant my father's name because they were asking me that before and after surgery. Oh, interesting. So it was kind I of a check to make sure. I didn't know that either. <laughs> it was kind of that check. It's like, oh, you still remember your father's name. You're okay. <laughs> so I know when I came in, the nurses were very efficient. They weren't very talkative, but they were like very professional and did exactly what they needed to do. Uh, the doctor had come in as well and checked on you yeah. and kind of said that you could be released that day. We left around four o'clock. You had breakfast and what was that? Before you came, they served me tea and some biscotti, some little finger cookies and like three of them. 
Uh, and they warned me, they said, this is very hot tea, let it sit. So, but I was, I was really wanting, it had no water, no fluids. They gave me a, a wet washcloth to dab my lips with all night. And that was the amount of fluid I had. So this tea looks really good. <laughs> I, I wanted to take into it, but I also had trouble like getting over to it. So I had to wait for a nurse to come in and even move that table. Also a couple of notable differences in that um, in an American hospital, and, and I know that we have viewers from all over the world, but um, we're American, so our experience is in the US and that's kind of what we're sharing in comparison. And that is when we've been in the hospital in the past, we take home, like we buy the pillows and we buy, like if there's a water jug, you're paying for that and that kind of thing. And it didn't seem like those things really happened. Maybe they disinfected things or whatever, but we didn't go home with a pillow. We, you had to wear um, some Crocs. And I think that they're just disinfected probably between use. It, it was very different than the US where it seems like everything goes in your bill that they give you take home, but everything is the patient. So it brings in the patient room, that goes with the patient. This hospital, you obviously had some equipment there that was going to be washed and reused. It just seemed like that's the way it was disinfected. I had no problem with anything they did with anything they gave me. It all seemed very sanitary, very clean. There were no issues at all with the hospital being unsanitary. I mean, everything was as pristine as you'd want in a hospital. It was interesting that you didn't get a gown. Yeah. Um, you put on, they told you to put on your pajamas. pajamas and after surgery. Well, they, they put, they had me in my pajamas and then they, uh, wheeled me down to surgery and in the surgery room that's where I took everything off and they just kind of held up a sheet. sheet in front of me and then laid me down with the, the sheet on top and that was that until I got back in my room and then later in the morning quite a, quite a bit later in the morning then they let me get dressed in my stuff so that's a little bit different yeah yeah I was I was really surprised there was no hospital gown didn't cause a problem, but it was a surprise. Right. What time is it? Quarter to 12. So about 24 hours ago, I was looking up the phone number to call to see if I can get an appointment to get my hernia checked. And now uh, I'm recovering because they actually did the surgery this morning, they did it last night. So it's been an amazingly fast process. I had a private single room, I feel like. I couldn't have asked for it better. Now I have, you know, we're going home today. And... So as we're recording this video, today is Saturday. Stitches come out tomorrow, Sunday. This video comes out somewhere between now and then. <laughs> and uh, when I started this whole process, it was Tuesday. Tuesday at 12.30, calling. We got to the hospital, 2 o'clock, showed passport, had a doctor's appointment. Uh, after, the doc after the surgeon talked to us, we got assigned a patient navigator who made sure that uh, name and address information was filled out. That was it for paperwork. She he also did discuss how much it would cost. And True, she, um, she went through the prices and the breakdown of what was gonna happen. So then she took us to, took me to uh, blood work and then to x-ray, uh, chest x-ray. And then after that, she basically said, Here's what's going to happen. You can uh, come back tonight and stay overnight. We won't charge you anything more because it'll be easier if you have an early morning surgery and you have to talk to the cardiologist tonight anyway. So when you come back tonight, just be prepared with pajamas and uh, a couple other things and then you're all set. So sounds great. Let's come back tonight and stay overnight. Then we came back. 7 p.m. was the appointment for the cardiologist. That took hardly any time at all. Then after him, a surgeon came up to us and said, we have an opening, we can take you tonight if you want. So a few minutes before eight o'clock, I was in my private room waiting for prep for surgery. Uh, a little after eight, a nurse arrived, did the surgery prep, told Judy she had to leave. By about quarter to nine, I was moved to the surgical room, started surgery, and before 10 o'clock, about, I guess, 9.55, the surgery was complete. And then I was moved back to my room and spent that night and part of the next morning and most of the day recovering in my private room. Then at 4 p.m. Wednesday, left the hospital 
and started recovery back in our Airbnb. It's been a really good recovery. They gave me pain meds, they gave me other medication for uh, the various things, the antibiotic, probiotic. Pre Prebiotics, yeah. probiotics. Yeah, but really the recovery has been very good. The pain medicine has been really helpful. To clarify, that was just a regular analgesic. Over the counter. And and it was convenient that in, in the building there was also a the pharmacy. pharmacy right there. So I was just able to get everything all at once. I didn't have to find a pharmacy and take prescriptions in. Yeah. And our appointment for Sunday, tomorrow, is any time between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. The nurse will just take care of it whenever we're ready. So incredibly convenient to be able to schedule the time we want to go back to the hospital. And as of today, I'm feeling really good. Like I don't feel like there's any problems with the, the stitches or that area of my body. I don't want to sneeze because I did that once and that was not a good experience. <laughs> Coughing is not allowed either. Other than that, I'm pretty darn happy with the recovery so far. I admit that while Kevin was in surgery, you know, my head went into a million different places and I was researching, you know, what what the surgery was, was were they doing the right things? Was it safe? And originally Kevin had said that he really wanted to have this done laparoscopically and the doctor suggested not to and to just have a regular cut and you know, at this time, I'm second guessing all of our choices because of our travel schedule and everything else. We just wanted to get this done. So we didn't get a second opinion. We didn't ask for recommendations. We were just trusting the universe to keep Kevin safe. And um, and we think that that did happen. But I did, it did run through my mind, you know, this is socialized medicine. Are they going to make shortcuts because it will be cheaper? I don't know. I don't know if that was the experience, but. Well, I had a friend on, online who contacted me after I told him about the surgery and what happened. And he's from here and he said, you picked a good hospital. So that made us feel a little bit better. It's like, yeah, good. Cause they seem to be really succinct with everything. They seem to be really on the ball. We didn't sit around and wait. We were out of that hospital in 45 minutes. That's really hard to believe that you could go in for a doctor's appointment, come out 45 minutes later with a surgery schedule and everything, and come back that night and then have the surgery. It, unheard of in the US, I'm pretty sure, no matter how much you're paying for a hospital. So I think we made a good choice. Maybe it would have been nice to try other alternatives, but as you said, we have to leave in a little over two weeks. So there's no way we can play around with maybe this hospital. Let's try talking to another one. I just felt good that we had a doctor's appointment within two hours and that made me very happy. And I also think that now that we've had a, a health issue under our belts, it's going to make it a little bit easier next time. And hopefully there <laughs> isn't a say, next time. No next time, we, we, we hope there isn't a next time, but we do plan to travel for um, hopefully a long uh, yeah, time to come. I think we're so conditioned to think that the way our treatment works in the US is the most efficient, going to keep us as healthy as it possibly can. Maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong. But I also do think that you can get good treatment, acceptable treatment, great treatment, uh, anywhere else in the world as well, especially in major cities. Yeah, and I feel like after this experience, the amount of time I spent worrying about getting ready for the surgery was completely wasted. I could have made a phone call, had this all done and satisfied really early. It's just, it don't waste time worrying about these things. There's so many good medical services out there, especially in countries that have socialized medicine. They just take care of things and they're used to handling a lot of people. And if they have some private hospitals like we went to, that's even a really great experience because now you're dealing with a, a smaller crowd of people that are arriving there. It was never crowded that hospital. We never had a queue to wait for anything. I do know that every place is different and your experience may not be the same as ours, but we at least wanted you to share our experience because I feel like there's always somebody who knows someone who's had a horrible experience and kind of creates unnecessary fear yeah. and so hopefully you can at least have one person that you know who had a positive experience as an offset to just 
give you a little bit more peace of mind. If you've had any kind of medical care or an expected surgery while you're on the road, we'd love to hear about it. We have a new place you can do that on our website. We're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. We're also giving you a chance to peek behind the scenes and are offering a bunch of other perks we're calling gelato levels if you decide you want to help support us financially as well. A video with the details is linked in the description below. This isn't the topic that we normally bring you, but please give it a like if it was useful to you. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. We would love to have you added to our community. Until next time. Until next time.